and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have my good brother here in the temple, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadari Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Xanatrix. It is May the it is May the first. If I hear one more if I hear one more fucking May Day or Star Wars joke, I swear to fucking God. We Fine, I'll, I'll make a much older joke for you. April showers bring Mayflowers, and what do Mayflowers bring? Pilgrims. Um, <laughs> I love. As an aside, I love I love bringing up that I love bringing up that poem whenever whenever somebody is whenever somebody decides to get up decides to pretend to be offended during Columbus Day or Thanksgiving. Yeah, and I'm like, shut the fuck, shut the fuck up, sit the fuck down, and eat your fucking turkey. <laughs> because some moments I have to channel Sid from FF7. Shut up, sit your asses down, and drink your goddamn tea! Uh, good old Sid. Mm -hmm. I can't do the accent, and ev even back then I always envisioned him with a southern accent. I don't know why. <clears throat> sit your asses down, shut up, and drink your goddamn tea! <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um... But the thing, but for this one, this is the first, this particular week, aside from, aside from the whole May thing and, well, everybody in Indianapolis probably losing their shit because month of May means, in, means Indy 500 coming. Ooh. But the, it is very rare that a single tweet provides the inspiration for an entire episode. But considering what we were talking about just before coming on, I was like, I we were never we're never using that type of tweet as inspiration, please. This is only a this is I only intend I don't intend to make a habit of this of one of these type of tweet questions being the um, being a being a repeat thing. It's only mm -hmm. in because a lot of times it's a a lot of times it's a s very simple question, one that one that I can just answer in the form of a tweet. Sometimes, yeah. however, an idea gets stuck in my head and I feel it has to be naturally explored. And if it sounds like I'm reducing Geek Watch to to my ex exploration of the of the crippling uh, amount of ideas in my head, you're not wrong. No. But I don't plan on making it, even though think even though backseat designing is gonna be has been a thing in the past on Geek Watch and will be a thing in the future, I don't intend to make a habit out of it in this form at the very least. So, but th but this particular but for this particular episode, well, as the title can show, you can blame Night Dive for this kind of thing. Which is what? Which is why it's going to be called not answering Night Dive's challenge. Because Night you Dive tends to say a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, for those who have been living under a rock for the last five years, Night Dive Studios is one is one of the is one of the handful of studios that have been spearheading this resurgence into old school shooters that we're currently enjoying. They've also been they've also been doing God's God's work in terms of bringing old games to work into modern systems. Uh, in some in some cases ha in some cases having to do a whole lot of workarounds in order to even get it to happen. Um, a couple of really big examples of this are Blood Fresh Supply, which was a bit raw. When it first came out, but nowadays is not so is not as much. 
I'm surprised you didn't go with the uh, Ramsey interpretation of that particular phrase, Monk. I didn't. It doesn't piss me off enough to deserve it. Okay, so it's not fucking raw. Got no. it. No, it's just, and to be fair, they had to do a whole lot of a whole lot of reverse engineering from mm -hmm. what I, from what I've been told because they could because because Atari had to be stupid because well let's not forget that the peop, that the people who are running things in what's known as Atari these days are not exactly the brain trust Atari was purchased by some sort of ca uh, financial capital company that later became an almost entirely crypto financial company so there's your explanation people mm -hmm. And and they espe they especially had to do a whole lot of workarounds with the re with the um, re release of Blade Runner. A lot of that was due to, a lot of that was due to the fact that there was a lot of stuff that could, that um they couldn't get. But ah, uh, licensing hell! What joy! It's less of licensing and more of there's so more of um. A less extreme version of what happened with Silent Hill HD. Ah. Uh, all right. the source code. Not all of the source code, but there were parts of it that were missing, and there were parts of it that, even back then, were a bit jank. Mm-hmm. Blade Runner is a, gr is a great game, but it was, a, it was a little bleeding edge at the time. E-word being bleeding rather than edge. Mm-hmm. And I do remember back then some people dismissing it because they did because Harrison Ford wasn't involved, which is a really weak, which is really weak, because mm -hmm. there's no way you're gonna get him in in the in the late '90s to do to do anything video game related, or get him to do anything period unless you throw a dump truck full of money at him. Mm -hmm. Ford's a grouch, is what I'm saying. I think. I mean. <laughs> I think he'd admit it. Yeah. But Night Dive had put out a tweet a few months back about how about um if you could if you could design your dream boomer shooter, what would what would it be? And to that end, before we can even answer that question, I do think we should we should explore and nail down what exactly a boomer shooter is because as our conversation as our conversation revealed early earlier on with one of our with one of our other temple mates um for some what defines a boomer shooter is is not as clear cut mhm mm well and the term boomer shooter just originally meant a shooter from an older age mhm mm but there was a specific motif and play style to those shooter games the quintessential boomer shooter the one everybody should know is doom and we're talking original doom and i i know some people might say well what not really it's for the same reason I don't. It's for the same reason I don't count Blake Stone in this kind of thing, even though they were part, even though they were um, parts in the progression. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the fact that I, I can go, I can go back and I can go back and play the original Doom or or play source ports of the original Doom, and have a good time for the most part. I can't do that with Wolfenstein past the first episode without getting bored. And this is not an issue of short attention span. It's an issue of the lack of en the lack of enemy variety makes things get repetitive real quick. Not to mention the fact that um, the the pacing hadn't exactly become hammered out like it was in something like Doom. Of course, there's also the fact that it that um, there's way too many goddamn levels and way too many goddamn doors. <laughs> I'm not joking. It um going back and going back and trying to play Wolfenstein 3D did reinforce my pathological hatred of hit scanners though. And
and and a reason once again why I've I will always be against the idea of universal ammo. Mm-hmm. Because I, I remember when I I remember ranting about that with Invisible War, and some people were like it streamlines the process. What's the issue? The issue the issue ha the issue happens when you have to when you have to balance it across several weapons. Oh, but. Because of because of the wave of of um of successors to old school shooters that we're currently in, just saying that it is a that it is a throwback to shooters of old doesn't necessarily doesn't um or that or that a boomer shooter is the is the early type of shooter doesn't really fit anymore. Yeah, there's a very specific play style, there's a very specific pacing, and there's a very specific motif. Hmm. And I think that those uh, centralize around <clears throat> weapon and enemy variation, uh, speed of play, and uh, I guess the, the, the best way for motif... Is ludicrous Gibbs? I'd I'd say I'd say more I'd say a bet a better catch all would be um, a more exploitation style design. Yeah, lots yes. of violence, like lots you, of ultra violence. Yeah you you look at the you look at the early generation of it, and it's it's um it's very. It's very much downstream from what could be considered low budget or gr or even grindhouse style cinema. Yeah. When Go shoot anything to to death in Doom again in the original Doom and see what their corpses look like. Mm -hmm. They aren't all they aren't pretty. None of them yeah. are. And I've already talked about the whole I've already talked about the Holy Trinity when it comes to the build engine. Even even if I both love and hate. Um, the three games in that in that trinity in equal measure. Mm -hmm. Or I suppose a better way to put it is I like them, but they don't like me back. The game isn't there to to hold your hand, monk. No, that doesn't mean I'm gonna. That doesn't mean I'm gonna let bullshit slide like like um. Let's see what would be a good example of build engine bullshit. Oh yeah, the oh yeah, the whole the whole shoot on you right as right as soon as they see you and get and cause you to th cause you to throw grenades or dynamite out of around corners. Mm-hmm. But at least none of them are the Plutonia experiments. Why do you do this to me? For the same reason you do it to me, monk. You already know the answers. Yeah. <laughs> There are certainly worse. There are certainly worse maps and certainly worse wads in the years since. Um, I feel bad for anyone's graphics card if it, when, whenever, I, or just their computers. Period. If they ever try to play nuts and think they're not going to get frame rate drop. Yeah, I am. Um, I have looked at some of the Doom wads over the years, and some of them I legitimately look at and go, "This was not designed by a sadist." This had to be designed from a reincarnated Nazi torturer. <laughs> oh, then of course maybe it's just Mech Hitler. Yeah, and then of course there's there's really biz there's interesting ones like Boom Power. Yeah, let's <laughs> like let's make any let's make every enemy explode with splash damage. What's the, what could possibly go wrong? I can think of a few things. And then Icarus got a hold of it and decided, you know what? I'm gonna load this in nuts. Which, and now we know how Icarus really flew cl flew flew too close to the sun. <laughs> it wasn't in wings of what of of feathers and wax. The splash damage pushed him into the sun's corona. Which, if none of you have seen nuts, I highly recommend looking at, just looking up screenshots of that wad and just be horrified at the sheer number of monsters you're gonna see. Mm -hmm. But 
I would say, I would say that nowadays the the concept of a boomer shoot is more of a mindset than it is a strict a strict set of um of mechanics. And obviously, no game can be boiled down to their mechanics. Otherwise, everybody would be playing a set of course of competition, and um, most people are most people aren't when they're playing um, simulation style racing. Mm -hmm. I'm not ba I'm not bashing the game. I'm just I'm just saying that it's got a very specific kind of appeal. Yeah. Um, and the same with boomer shooters. Mm -hmm. Uh now, of course, com of course, companies like Night Dive, New Blood, and three and Three D Realms have been lead. Three D Realms through, say, Void Point have been leading the charge in this kind of th this kind of throwback setup. The other thing that's been leading the charge is the res is the use of GZ Doom, which is it. which seems to it seems for a while there were multiple um, there were multiple source ports that that could be used when it came to Doom. GZ Doom seems to have become the most popular of them. Why do you think that is? Probably because it's the easiest to manage. Okay, fair. Uh, I remember using Vavoom at one point for for a for a um, port of Strife before we got an official re-release. It had problems, and to be fair. Oh. Whenever you're dealing with old PC games on modern hardware, you're going to be in for an interesting time. Mm hmm But, of course, the hard, the hard part with doing this kind of episode was getting a graphic for it, and that's why instead instead of... That's why we... I ended up just having... I ended up having Shades just use a collection of, of throwbacks. Mm -hmm. Which is why... We, which is why on this thing we have... The woman from Nightmare Reaper, um, Shelly Harrison, um, V1 from um, Ultra Kill, and Big John. Eh. Specifically, Big John as he appeared in Dusk. Yeah. Uh, and as as an aside, I can't I can't. I can't understand how much I appreciate J Dave Oshry being a complete fucking meme lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And to their credit, New Blood doesn't isn't ju doesn't just um, produce produce um, shooters because they're also responsible for one of the more interesting horror games in the last few years, even if they only produced it. That being Faith. Mm hmm. Which one would one would think one would think you couldn't make a pixel based game scary? They found a way. I mean, let's be honest. Corpse Party was doing that beforehand. Fair, but when I get when I gave it some thought. The idea that the idea that came to me, the, there were a few ideas that came to me, and as tempting as it would be to do something sci-fi related or even sci-fi adjacent, um, it's kind it's kind of a case of everybody's fucking done that. Mm. It's not it's not exactly using the engine to its full potential, and the idea of a fantasy shooter is still something that is relatively untapped, in my opinion. I mean, there was her there was heretic. There, there of course was Hexen. There's been, there's been Graven and a medieval, but it's not a whole lot. Not a whole lot of pickings. <clears throat> and I ended up thinking about it, and then I, then I, re then I realized there's one other thing that. Is that isn't delved into as much, and that is the idea of doing melee in first person. And I know a lot of people say that you can't do melee do melee in first person. Well, 
I do not agree with that one bit. Because I saw it I saw it done 22 years ago. My first introduction to the concept was Machin X back on the Dreamcast in 2000. And while it, while it isn't going to be isn't going to appeal to some first person purist because it had a lock on button, although I don't although I'd argue there's I'd argue there's nothing wrong with having a lock on button in first person, especially when movement and is going to be key. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, that that and the limited control setup that you had with the Dreamcast, you didn't have twin, you didn't have um, twin sticks yet. Yep. I would I would say that that game demonstrated that you can do it, and then in two thousand four we'd get breakdown on the Xbox, and more recently, we've had um, Kingdom Come Deliverance. There's also this game called Xeno Clash that everybody keeps telling me I should take a look at. Xeno Clash is okay. Yeah, whenever I talk, whenever I ask about um, first person and melee, that's a name that keeps getting brought up. Um, I'd say the, I'd say the chivalry games also count. As dumb as they can get sometimes. Hmm. But to the to that end, as with all of the with thinking about all of these, the idea of a almost almost um samurai themed um boom shoot came um came to my, came to mind in my head, and I thought that'd be worth exploring for the temple. And that brings us to the pre that brings us to the present and. This will certainly be an interesting case because a lot of times when we've done backseat designer, we've um, we've been building off of somebody el of somebody else's work, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. um, I will admit something that certainly that certainly helped serve as a bit of inspiration is just is just the general style of Ghostwire Tokyo. I still haven't had enough time to actually play it with any with any level of time yet. Whereas I've beaten it. But the whole the whole thing the whole thing of using paper spe paper spells at, and the like as an onmyunji in that game certainly ha certainly yeah. helped. Um, it's also a good uh, this is also a good opportunity to explore some of the um, futuristic yet feudal stuff that we see in Tenra because we fucking love Tenra. I didn't make you sad again, did I? I can't hear you, monk. Sorry about the roboting, folks. Discord apparently hates me tonight. But the idea the idea that I was the the idea that I'm go that I'm going with with this is uh, is um centered on two concepts. One is close range centric, not melee centric, but close range centric. Oh, it's because, like I like I said before, I do be I do believe you can do good melee in first person. Mm -hmm. We've seen we've seen it happen. At, we've seen it happen three times at least. Um. Mm -hmm. You're not going to see it done in you're not going to see it done well in an Elder Scrolls game obviously because well it's the creation engine. We don't talk about the creation engine. Mm -hmm. The other thing was was multiple um was was multiple I had referred to it as classes in my initial notes but just di but just different um presets. Mm -hmm. Um not too far removed from Hexen. Is while Hexen's multiple characters was a, an interesting idea. The problem was by doing that, you limited each individ 
the individual arsenal of each character. So I think in both cases you got only like three or f three or four weapons total. Four weapons total. The first three um, either didn't use mana at all. One used blue. One used green. And the fourth one you had to collect pieces of, and it used both. Mm -hmm. And of course you had all the artifacts and items and armor pieces. But because of that, what you effectively have is the is the kind of arsenal you would have had with just one character just split multiple ways. Yeah. And I'm not and I'm not saying classes and class advancements as if I'm going full RPG elements, which is one of those phrases I'm kind of sick of. Yeah, I can understand why. But. The I, but it's more of it's more of different pl different short and long term play styles. Yeah, what you get and when. Mm -hmm. The theme that the theme that I go, that I wanted to go with was heavily leaning into Japanese mythos because it's it's going to be a mythos that you and I are very familiar with. No, monk, we aren't weebs or anything. <laughs> Well, to be fair, even to be fair, even weebs don't dip don't dip into the mythos like we do. They just they just watch a they just watch a bunch of sh a bunch of shows. Air. Like we've, I think you and I have come across weebs that that the closest thing the closest thing they know to Japanese mythology is knowing what an oni is. Or a kitsune or a tanuki, mm -hmm. the three most, the three most publicized types of yokai in all of Japanese folklore. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I will admit, when it comes to this, when it comes to this kind of concept, there is one, there is one game that we can, that we can utilize as a point of reference, even if it's not a first person game. That being Neo. I knew that's where you were going with this. I knew it. <laughs> that's if because... only because Neo has a fuck ton of folklore in it. Yeah. But as far as as far as starting with the archetypes, I think it would be best for us to have three archetypes as essentially three different um, play styles. Um, because the thing, first off, there's there's always the Holy Trinity approach, but the but I'm not I'm not sure if using the archetypes that we saw in Hexen would be a good idea because with that one you had the melee based character, the range based character, and the Gish. Mm-hmm. But since we're since we've made it clear that this is that this idea is close range centric that kind of approach isn't going to work but as tempting as it would be to have one of them be the to be a samurai i think ronin would be a, would be a better title they don't even need to need to necessarily be called ronin mm -hmm. if you want someone that evokes a foot soldier on the battlefield, you could call them an Ashigaru. So I think the first the first archetype I'm thinking is definitely in is definitely would lean more into the tanky end of things. Um, whole lot of armor, whole whole lot of whole lot of damage, but not exactly the most mobile. Mm hmm. Um. You'd probably go with Bushi in that case, wouldn't you? Bushi would work, yeah. And that would be uh, the approach. The approach that I'd probably go with that is that 
they if we're using if we're using the standard style of health and armor, they can get more armor than everybody else, but they can't overheal. Mm -hmm. The armor is there to provide them more soak. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also probably. Th you know how some games like to do the whole thing of armor just takes just soaks up a bit of the damage instead of instead of all of it. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been iffy about that. I can see I can see why it's I can see why it's done, but I think people's I think a lot of people's mind, mindset with how their brain is going to work is that armor comes first and then and then health goes down after that. And you see that in a lot of boomer shooters. Not all of them, but a lot of them. The armor is what is completely consumed first before health starts taking damage. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think that's an approach we should we should keep, largely mm -hmm. because don't fix what ain't broken. Mm -hmm. uh, I th as obviously obviously one ang one angle would be a um would be a caster or or our equivalent of that and I th I think in that regard um there's two there's two that I was thinking of one of them would be some would be akin to a um a priest a shinto priest and the other more akin to an onmyunji um in in this respect if you're going to go close range and you're going to go semi-caster type based in folklore, it would actually be better to go with a, a Shinto or Buddhist priest. On, on Myoji tend to use a lot of spell formations and Shikigami. Fair. So in, the, in that regard, and if we're, if you're going with if you're going with Shinto, that's a good that's a good excuse to have say a a reach weapon as their default. Yep. The Kakara. Mm -hmm. Um. I'd say I'd say that for. Th I'd say that the way they handle armor and health is is that hmm. I'd say they sh they should be they should be able to overheal but they are but they're but um but instead but they can't they can't use armor they just get more health or th they mm. get the most overheal I I should say If that's the case, they should start at least with a small amount of overheal anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, they shouldn't start at 100 HP like everybody else, since they aren't going to be able to pick up any of the armored pickups that they might see at the beginning of a level. So, hi... And in this kind of thing, obvi ob we're obviously when it comes to health and armor, we're working with the idea that these that it's all pickups. You're not equipping anything. It's just it's just what your cap is at. Yep. We're going with the with the we're going back to roots with this boomer shooter. Um, and the deep the default. For both, obviously, is one is one hundred. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say with the sh I'd say with the Shinto, they'd probably they'd probably start at one twenty five or one fifty. One twenty five was what I was thinking. One fifty is basically an entire half a health bar more to start with, and that's a little 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 op at that point. Um, as far as their overheal cap, I'm thinking um, two hundred or three hundred. I was thinking 250 um, with our normal over here heal going to 200. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, the Bushi doesn't overheal, so he just stays at 100. Yeah. Of course, the fact that you can't overheal does mean that you've got to be um, careful with with healing items. Because mm -hmm. you could take one of the 25% healing pickups when you've only got 5% and then you've wasted 20% of it. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as as far as our third um, archetype, um, I think this is a good opportunity to put in uh, to put in something more assassin like. Mm -hmm. And if we want to if we want to work with the cliches, if you want to put your ninja in there, this is where to do it. Eh. I feel like the ninja would be treading on a point we've already gone through, though. Mm -hmm. um, because ninjas are also notorious for not wearing much armor, if at all. That is that is a fair point. So what so what would you suggest as as our th as our third avenue that it, that um isn't s stepping too much on the other t on the other toes? Um, honestly. At that point, uh, let me think. That's actually a harder one to pick up than you might think. Ooh, um, this is also likely going to be our most mobile character. I know it's I know it's me, but I keep but my mind keeps going to monk. Got to play the gimmick. <laughs> yeah. Um and you know that could work. There were a lot of warrior monkhoods in feudal Japan, so So hey. Yeah. But the uh at that point you they they wear you know, normal amounts of armor. Mm -hmm. But they also tend to still be fairly quick. And to that end, that's that's a good spot to go into one other thing that we're that we're considering. And that is a that is a rechargeable dash. If you mm -hmm. you've seen if you think if any of you are thinking of the dashes you might see in say Shadow Warrior or Doom Eternal, um that's the kind. That's the kind of thing that we're going with. Well, and since we're going to be focusing on close range gameplay, that sort of dash is kind of just intuitively built for something like this. Oh, uh, I'd say I'd say it rec I'd say it recovers v recovers very quickly, no matter what. It's just a matter of how many charges you have of it. Um. Mm -hmm. uh, Some games use dashes as a escape button. This it this wouldn't be one of those kind of situations. Yeah. I'm thinking that we should go on the rate of one, two, two. One for the bushi, uh, two for the priest, and two for the monk with the addition that his dash does damage. So Not a whole lot of damage. But something you can kind of weave in with the rest of your close range gameplay a little a little differently in a tactical level. Mm -hmm. So Of course there's probably gonna be, you know, pickups and challenges within whatever levels that we aren't actually designing in minutiae that increase the amount of charges a person can get. Yeah, this it's just the it's just the starting point. Um, mm -hmm. Aside, f I'd also say that the s the Sohei is, is going to be your would probably be your outmaneuver archetype. So I'd say um, standard health and armor, but if you're um, if you're atta if you're attacking from flank or from or back attacking, you're the only one who gets extra damage. Yeah. 
like 10% extra damage. Um, I know that I know that sounds a bit advanced for something like this, but we've we've seen some massive advancements in how in and game in gameplay when it comes to the, when it comes to this kind of concept. Mm -hmm. And I um, I I know I've brought it up in the past, but just something like Ultra Kill is an, is a picture perfect example of how of how far you can stretch that concept. Yeah. And there are some things you'll keep simple, and other things that you can make quite uh, intricate. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have Bushi, Shohei, and and Priest. Uh, we have the whole thing with the dash system. The um, one of the other notes would probably be emphasis on power ups, not not. I'd say. Actually, no. I take it back. Since, since, given what we mentioned as inspirations, I think having a, having a um, a list of consumables is no is noteworthy. Mm -hmm. But not necessarily a, but not necessarily a full on RPG style equipment system. Yeah. Um, and in, in regard to that, I do, th I do think that each of them should have one, should have one, um, one inventory item, essentially, we'd be going with an inventory system in this, that is exclusive to them and doesn't run out. Okay. Um, that mo it more. This is not too far removed from, say, the gadget in um that it, that characters have in, say, Siege. Mm -hmm. It's just while you might be able to get other inventory items, this is the one thing that you can only you're gonna you're gonna have at the start, and it's going to be something that's crucial to that playstyle. Okay. Um. With the with the bushi, I feel like I feel like something to something to enhance his um, either his attack or def his damage or defense would be key. I keep thinking mm -hmm. something something like a whetstone or or the equivalent. I think since we've already kind of built the bushi to be tanky. Make it a um a sounding hammer. The the same type of hammer used to check the uh, integrity of weapons and armor by blacksmiths. Mm -hmm. What would you have its effect what would you have its effect be? Just um just 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 um just just less da just less damage over a few seconds um i i would have it be that uh so long as you have armor points since we've made the the stress that he's getting more armor than anybody else and doesn't have overheal um you take reduced damage for i want to say 7 seconds um so your arm, you know, your armor's chewed through a lot more slowly. Uh, I'm not sure what percentage you'd want to put in on that. I'd I'd say cut it in half over seven seconds is a is good. Okay. Okay. Gives the bushi to find time to either claw out or find more armor. Uh, more armor drops as he needs them. Um, for the so, for the Sohei, mm. I'm tempted to just say a gourd. 
to really play into the stereotypes. But I don't think so. I think it should be um, a pair of fighting claws. For seven seconds, his flanking and backstabs go up from 10% to uh, 30%. Instead of fighting claws, what about prayer beads? That could work too. But I mean, our monk isn't necessarily the most devout man since he's fighting. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say what he was praying to. This is true. He could be praying to an Ashura and be some sort of heretic. Mm -hmm. But you... What did you? But uh, what did you say is the effects again? Just so I can write that down in my notes. Uh, increases the uh, extra backstab and flanking damage from ten percent to thirty percent for seven seconds. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly, the priest, which I'm thinking the I'm thinking the um, I'm thinking that the, for the priest it is. I'm not sure what I'm not sure what to call it, but it's but it's giving them regen is giving them rapid regen over um set over that same amount of time. I know what to call it. The thousands heart the 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 thousand heart mudra, which bring which is a mudra for pre for peace and prosperity. And over the seven seconds, they regenerate. However much you want to say they won't regenerate. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much you'd want them to regenerate, because a percentage would just be, oh yeah, so now they regenerate 10%? Well, that's, you know, 10 HP a second. That could be a big boon. I have... I'm going. I'm. I'm going to. I'm going to put. I'm going to put ten. I'm going to put ten. He, ten health over over seven seconds for now. Ide, ideally, ideally, something like this. Something like this might be. Actually, no. Instead of, instead of ten, I do think it should be fifteen because. I think the play style with the priest is that they should always need. They should always want to be in overheal status. Okay, so this is just to keep them topped off, basically. Mm -hmm. So fi 15 seconds per tick for 7 seconds. Yeah. Or 15 HP per tick for 7 seconds. Okay. Yeah. And... I would say... Now, when it comes to... When it comes to... We when it comes to weaponry... As tempting as it would be to have to have weaponry to have a weapon list exclusive to each um, archetype, I feel like that would be limiting. We'd end up running into the same problem that the Hexen games had. Yep, you split one equipment list amongst three uh, players. Mm -hmm. So instead, I th instead I think going with something something more universal would would uh, would be applicable. But each of them would have a di would be better in certain archetypes' hands. Mm -hmm. And let's start. Let's start with. I was gonna say let's start with the let's start with the obvious, but even um even something like say a medieval, your basic axe has is not ex is not just a standard axe. So <laughs> that do so that do that doesn't quite work. I mean, especially since we're dealing with lots of Japanese folklore and mythos. Um, but I'm think I am I am thinking 
I think one of the starting weapons has to be some should be some form of katana. I mean, that's what we're going to give the bushi, mm -hmm. right? But I think um, it should be a nodachi for the weight. So no, go with a nodachi for the bushi instead of a katana. Yeah. He's already a heavy guy. He's already got more armor than anybody. Nodachi are made notoriously more for splitting people in a single strike rather than strikes just being for a single kill. Mm -hmm. At least in folklore. I'd, I'd say that the effect it should have is... Um, knockback. Not knock back for the not knock back for the character, but that um I was thinking either knock back or just having the widest sweep of of all of the melees. You know, the whole I'd... wide and the, a wide and slow kind of thing. Mm hmm I honestly think that the knockback makes more sense with the weight of the weapon. Mm -hmm. So Causing enemy knockback is always nice. Yeah. Um, let's see, as far as the starting weapon for the for the Sohei, um, it probably it. Either... He starts unarmed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he starts on um. <clears throat> In lieu, in lieu of, un, in, in, I was, th I had thought about going with a sha with a shakujo, but that would be more, that's, that would be more for the priest being a reach weapon. Mm -hmm. But no, the so the sohei, st the sohei is unarmed. Mm hmm. Oh. Which means you should really be taking advantage of that flanking damage as much as possible. And highest highest attack speed of any of the starting. Well, yeah. You're not wearing a weapon. You're just punching and kicking, punching, kicking, kicking, punch. Mm -hmm. So starting, starting Sohei weapon, hi highest, and I put in hi I put in highest attack speed. So they are to further reinforce the whole hit and run thing. Yep. Um. And as far as the as far as the priest, um, would you go with the Shakujo or would you go with some, would you go with a um, Yari? Mm, I think we should go with the with the Shakujo. Spears were less common around actual priests, mm -hmm. so. It's, I'd say its advantage is having is having the I'd say having the reach and while it can't inflict knockback it can stun yeah okay <laughs> oh as far as as far as non as far as non starter weapons um with there's always there's always the work with the first three obviously they're obviously they're infinite ammo i'd say with i say with the with the non standard weapons we should have some sort of ammo system i am i'm thinking that i'm thinking that it's somewhat akin to the magic weapons in jade empire okay um just in this case, our our resource is um is key. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So there there isn't there wouldn't be a, there wouldn't be ammo pickups per se. You can technically recharge. You can technically recharge a weapon. I.e. I.e. You're putting key, you're putting your own key into it, but you but you but it's a you have to be sit. You have to be moving. You have to be still while you're doing that. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um. 
and I'd say I'd, as tempting as it would be to put a to put, to have a 100 based ammo count, um, I think just I think just having a set of charges is perfectly fine for this kind of thing. Okay. Um, with heavier weapons, obviously having more charges because I've already I've already established how I don't like un the idea of universal ammo, and that includes the idea of ammo percentage rather than how much rather than how much you actually have. Yeah. <clears throat> But and the the key ba the weapons that would take key these would be the these would be the more universal ones. Okay. I.e., when you pick an archetype in this hypothetical, you'd start with either a Nodachi, unarmed, or a Shakujo. But the weapons that you the weapons that you'd pick up on stages. It do, you can equip them no matter you can anybody can equip them, or, mm. any, or you get anybody can get them. Yeah, and use them. Because mm -hmm. as te once again, as tempting as it would be to to um do archetype specific key weapons, we'd end up doing three times the work. Yep. So better to ha better to have that uni better to have that universal and let people come up with dumbass strategies themselves. Cause that's always Indeed. the fun part. Watching people exploit the hell out of an engine. Yep. Yeah. Or 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 exploit the hell out of combo systems to go full ridiculous. No, we didn't follow the true style scene at any point. No, we didn't watch Gep Gun only runs. Mm -hmm. uh, Not at all. But I would I would say that. As tempting as it would be to 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 reference some of the to reference some of the weapons in Onimusha or Neo, I do think ha, I do think having weapons that are loosely based on certain stories would would be a bit more apropos. Mm-hmm. Um. But I'd but I'd say the way to go about this is to look at look at the archetype that a weapon is going to fill. Um. I'd say in this, the first thing we need is the is to address our equivalent to the we to a weapon that is a workhorse in any old school shooter. We need our we need our shotgun equivalent. Okay. It obviously doesn't <clears throat> have to be a shotgun. I mean, the Whisper's Edge in a medieval is that game's shotgun, and it's <laughs> and it does and that's a weapon that is all that's a game that is all melee weapons. Yeah. Mostly. I don't think you can use the, the um. I don't think you can use the purple ribbon candy as <laughs> in melee. But what? But given given that I keep I keep coming back to the grass cutter. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> you mean the Kusanagi? Yeah. All right. Just... So you wanted to shoot a, a a small forward wind wave or vacuum yeah. wave? Yeah. Okay. So seventy degree arc, maybe? Yeah. Or sixty degree. I'd say se I'd say seventy is best. Okay, and it goes out a little a little direction, but mm -hmm. not a huge amount. Again, no. it, we're emphasizing close range. Yeah, and then extra damage if you hit with the sword itself. Mm-hmm. Okay. The Kusanagi is a normal, or essentially a normal sword, so. Sure, it's god touched, but if you look at the Imperial Regalia, it's small. It's mm -hmm. it's a light weapon, so I think it shouldn't have a lot of charges. Um, uh, I'd say I'd say it would have a decent amount because the remember shot 
Shotgun equivalents are always your workhorse. Yeah, but I mean, if if we're looking at say Doom, uh, specifically Doom twenty sixteen or or Doom Eternal, the shotgun has what twenty five shells total. Mm-hmm. So like like it's it's a lot for a shotgun, but it's not a lot in comparison to the entire combat uh cycle. Yeah, of course, with the system that we've had, um, that sort of ammo management isn't as much of it isn't as much of an issue because you can always recharge your ammo. It's more of a don't get cocky kind of thing. Yeah, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm I, like I'm 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 thinking not a high number of charges, but like because I assume something else that we'll have that'll be a, a mini gun equivalent is yeah. gonna have. Like a hundred charges. <laughs> um, now in the in that in that same in that same vein, um, as tempting as it would be to have to have a super shotgun equivalent, there is not there is not all it would be all it would there is not a whole lot of point to doing that. You could just upgrade the Kusanagi back into the. Um... What was the name? The original name that Susanoo used for the sword. Mm-hmm. We'll th- we'll probably th- we'll probably think of it later. Ame no Munakumo no Tsurugi. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd. S- Let me t- let me check let me check one little thing yeah I was trying I was trying to see if I could come up, if I could find a universal arsenal list but that didn't work. Oh, but I'd say I'd say the ne- I'd say the next I'd say the next one the next um weapon that we'd need that we'd need is some is something is some sort of um some sort of rapid fire projectile one. Mm-hmm. You know, something to our equivalent of the plasma gun or the or the volt ride or s- something similar. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Let me let me think real quick. We, hmm. <sighs> I really, I really can't think of something right now. Hmm. Um. Since we mentioned the Imperial Regalia, mm. um, what about the, what about the Maga, What about a Magatama? You mean uh, the Yasakuni, Yasakuni no Magatama? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, Yasakani. Kuni Kani? I think it's Kani. Never mind. Um, okay. Uh, and so you're saying they're focusing their key through it as, and just kind of shooting key pellets. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. I know. I know that kind. I know that would kind of contrast with the close range centric, but this is. I always, I always saw the 
um, plasma gun as 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 something that's meant to be a stun lock thing. Mm -hmm. Which is why it's high high rate of fire, but not a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. And this would be this would be in that in that same vein. It's 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 meant to it's meant to keep something aggressive off of you, not to or to go, or to give you some, or to give you some space. Mm -hmm. It's meant to create distance when you need it. Mm -hmm. Can't create too much though, because otherwise, you know, you're out of effective range for other stuff. Yeah. Um. Then when then when it comes to and when it comes to our our good old room clear, our equivalent to the ch to the chain gun. Um. I'm not. I'm not sure if we. I'm not sure if we. If we could even. Do, if we could even do an equivalent with this kind of system. I don't think it would work out well. Mm -hmm. Oh. Now, as far as far as far as as far as our our um equivalent to something to something splash damagey. I think that I think that's something that w that we can work with. Oh yeah. Um I mean something splash damagey. Mm -hmm. mm. Let me think here. <laughs> Wait, as far. Wait, what about um, what about Izan? What about Izanagi's spear? You mean the spear he used to raise the land? Yeah, Ame no Nuhoko. Mm -hmm. Um, I think something that kind of works as a like is based on the genesis of Japan. If we do use it, it's going to be something bigger than just a splash damage weapon. Like I'll, that's... I'll move that. I'll move that aside to be our equivalent of the BFG. Yeah, I'm thinking that if we're going to use the spear of the origin gods of Japan, um, that's like saying Gungnir should be our splash weapon in a in a in a, no, in a Norse based version of this. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's quite, quite, quite the, uh, <laughs> quite the thing. Yeah, but that, this would, this would be our panic button and the one that has the least amount of charges. How about, actually, we make it something that doesn't look like a weapon. Um. The. Since we are we we do have people who are, well, ostensibly religious workers, mm -hmm. why not an onusa, which is those wooden ones with the paper streamers on them, mm -hmm. that are used in uh, Shinto purification rituals? Uh, specifically, we could make it the variation uh, the Hadai Gushi, which is. Uh, when the papers are attached to a staff that is either hexagonal or octagonal mm -hmm. and is considered more holy than a normal uh onusa um could you write down could you write down what the spelling of it so i can get that right sure i'm go uh, no you know what i'm gonna do Monk? i'm just gonna give you the kana and you'll have to work it out <laughs> no i'm joking <laughs> Uh, it's in Disputation of Geekwatch. All right. And
and you and you're thinking that this is uh, that this is our um splash AOE. our splash our splash AOE of some sort. Um I know that in Hexen some of the AOE stuff that was done wasn't exactly done with splash damage but like summoning multiple projectiles that then tracked multiple enemies. Um, either way works for this. I think this could just be a, a centric AoE from the person. So Because we're, we're talking close range, so this is uh, a radial burst from them as they shake the staff. Yeah, I'd, I'd say I'd say that would be, I'd say it would be a close burst instead of the um, instead Throw of it. the range mm. splash damage. Yeah. So I, I, I think they shake the Harayagushi and uh and it's got knockback, obviously, since it's our splash and, you know, oh shit button. Mm -hmm. Um, And like you said, few charges, because it is an oh shit button. And it the closer something is, the more damage they're going to take. Mm -hmm. It's also a good... It also means that our room clear is basically... Bait people in a room and then use this. <laughs> <laughs> kite, 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 haregaishi. Yeah. Or, uh, haregaishi, excuse me, I said that wrong. <laughs> Push them all off an edge. Yeah, I'd say... I'd say that... Um... So that co that covers that. Um, I actually had I actually had considered the mirror as a count as a counter hitter. Um, I'm not quite sure we're making that type of game though. Fair. If if anything, if we were going to use the the mirror, the uh, Yata no Kagami. Mm -hmm. Um, it would be more like a temporary protection that anybody can put on, just something that straight up helps with avoiding damage in some way. Whether that's just actually reducing the damage you're taking, or, I don't know, slowing down projectiles that come within the range so that you can play, you know, Toho games with your first person <laughs> your first person boomer shooter. Oh, remember I mean, all the projectiles with Heretic, especially especially in its especially in Shadow of the Serpent Riders? Yep. But I've also played a first person three D uh bullet hell game called Drunken Robot Pornography Monk. Fair. So, uh, I'm also thinking of that. <laughs> as far as as far as which one is which one is worse, we'll leave we'll leave that up to you. Mm. Um I'd say um what ab what about the what about the Totska? Um I hmm. That's an interesting idea, but that's also another sword. Stotska no Tsurugi. And it's also... Okay, okay. counter-offer. Um, ben, ben K's club. Okay. So this will be a, a, our, our bigger hitter. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I said I said that there might be a there is a bit of no, that there's a bit of knockback with Thino Dachi. There's no bit with something like Ben K's club. Yeah. Like we're talking, you're you're sending motherfuckers flying with this kind of thing. Yeah. Or to use it another way, you're using enemy you're using enemies as your ranged weapon. <laughs> <laughs> The downs the downside is is with is with something like this it I'd say is wind up. Mm -hmm. It's gonna have time because too much time to it. For all isn't part of the story that ben, that Ben K was a, that Ben K was thro was thro there's multiple stories with Ben K obviously but um. Whenever, whenever I think I think of him wielding essentially a tree, and I keep and I'm almost making um, dragon slayer jokes. Mm -hmm. As far as one of the other stories was that he was that he was so ugly that no that nobody would look at him and they got distracted. Mm hmm. Um, but in these, I did put um, I did put Ame no Ame no Nuhuko as essentially our essentially our BFG. It's you're you are with that kind of thing. You're you're essentially um. Essentially, thro essentially throwing a short a short spear, which calls the bigger one. <laughs> so you need you need a room you need the room cleared. This is this is how you do it. Yep. Um. I'd say so. That's one, two, three, four, five key ba key based weapons. Yeah. Uh, I'd say I'd, I'd say another one that I'm another one that I'm thinking of is um Musashi's ore. But how would that what would that do? Um Do you remember the flak cannon? Yeah. Something like that. But we already have a lot of of arced pushback weapons. That it that is fair. Yep, we have the Tetsubo and we have we have the Nodachi as the base weapon for the Bushi, so I feel like this would just be treading the same ground. If we're gonna use Musashi's ore for something hmm. it should be used for something different. What would what would you suggest? See, that's the problem. I I can't really think of anything that Musashi's or could do that wouldn't already tread something we have. Fair fair point. Though I, when I think about it, it would lean a little bit too much into something like Ben K's club because, well, it's an or. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do think that sh that um. This that's a good opportunity to shift into um inventory items. Okay. Um obvi obviously obviously having obviously having some sort of equivalent to a to a healing potion is one that we'd have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
as I mean, med- medicinal pellets work. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can rip that straight from Neo and Sekiro and a whole bunch of others. I'd say I'd say it'd probably be. Um, would you have it be a percentage or would you have it be a set or a set amount? I mean, when you already know what your maximums and minimums are, those are the same thing, just different amounts at that point. So just a set amount. Yeah, I'm thinking 25. 25 points, yeah. Um, and obviously an, impro- obviously an improved one that would do 50. Yeah. Um, in that in that same vein, well, we don't we don't have to worry we don't have to worry about a ammo inventory item for obvious reasons. Um, yep. I am I am thinking of of certain of certain charms that one could find that is go, that would util, that would utilize elements. Okay. Just as damage, or mm-hmm. what? Just just as da- just as damage. Okay. Um, I mean, at the at that point, you could make those literal paper paper talismans. Mm-hmm. The on- the honestly the on- the only ones I was thinking of are the are a are a fire and ice and a light and a lightning one. Okay. And all of these could be gotten in level pretty easily, probably. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Man. I'd say. I'd I'd. I'd say some. I'd say some form of some form of of equivalent to invisibility. That's where we could use the mirror. Mm-hmm. The Yata no Kagami conceals you for, I don't know, 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. Unless you attack. On one hand, on one hand, I could, on one hand, I could see that, and the on the other hand, um, I I always I always enjoy the <laughs> the hilarity of oh who's who's kill who's killing all of our men, it who's killing all of our men? I can't see him. <laughs> I mean, but this is a boomer shooter, monk. We're not going for a stealth game. Yeah. Um, I'd say, I'd say, um, obviously, since we talked about invisibility, we'd need one that's, um, a very short god mode. You mean, you mean equivalent to the berserk modes in Doom? Um, I was thinking more of, with the berserk, with, with something like berserk. I was thinking both Berserk and um, Invincible. Okay. Um, Not both see, at the same time, obviously. Mm-hmm. Well, for the Berserk, I'm I'm thinking we, we just call that um, an Ashura heart. They eat the heart of an Ashura and get Berserk for so long. Because, you know, the Ashuras are all the uh, fighting demons. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as far as as far as invinci- as far as um, invincibility, it's going to be an effigy of Canon, the thousand-armed goddess of mercy. See, I'm thinking ahead. <laughs> I'm thinking with portals. Mm-hmm. Don't worry. Oh. Uh, and that's bah. Thank you. No problem. Um, 
I'd say... I'm actually I'm actually thinking of what of um a sh of a shikigami that cre that creates a double of you for a few seconds. Yeah, um, and that can just be a literal paper a paper effigy of a person or a shaped like a person. Mm -hmm. Oh. As tempting as it would be to go with some equivalent of a weapon that of the Morphovum, there's we don't have we don't have an equivalent we could go with. Mm -hmm. this is, as funny as it is to turn enemies into chickens, we don't ha we don't have our equivalent. We kind of do, but it wouldn't be an item. It'd be more like summoning a yokai that does it. Yeah, and that do that doesn't fit. Yeah, we're fighting the yokai, not summoning them. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see, I. I do think. I was gonna. I had. There was one. Th there was one thing that I had that I had in. As as just a random as just a randomizer, and that it and that would be some sort that would be some sort of effigy of the sep of the seven, i.e. the seven lucky gods. Mm-hmm. But what would that do? Um. I'd say I'd say I'd say it would be some sort of randomized effect. I'm I'm not big on that. Most boomer shooters don't do R, that type of RNG. No, they just do bullshit RNG damage. <laughs> Fair point. Well, cuz the RNG damage or other things that are outside of player control can be dealt with but with the tools a player has inside their control. An RNG item is an item that is outside of their control. They can only choose when to use it, not what it will do. Mm -hmm. And that that's my uh, ethos behind that, why I don't think that's a good idea. There's a reason people tend to avoid the RNG pickups in most boomer shooters. Because it's just not worth the potential worse outcome. Um. I'm think you know how in you know how in some cases there's items that will turn the enemies against each other? Yeah. What about using the Kagura for that? The Kagura Suzu? Mm-hmm. I know what you're talking about. Um... I think that could work. Yeah. Since they're used as part of the Kagura dance. Mm-hmm. You know, for shits and giggles, I looked up Kagura Suzu. Apparently, there's a VTuber with that name. That makes me happy. <laughs> I don't know why it just does. Well, cons consider it a ca consider it a case of of enjo of enjoying the of fate has a sense of irony. I mean, she's even part of the in the a musical club at her school, according to her profile. So, no. not the percussion one, though. But I'd I'd say that's a good, 
I'd say that's a good enough. I'd say that's a. I had thought about something like the chaos device is equivalent in this, but all that is is just a reset button. <laughs> so mm -hmm. not a whole lot of point on that front. Now we get to monsters, and I would. Sh 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 I believe we should go with um with yokai. Like straight up and up traditionally okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I know for a f I I think for a fact, um, Oni is the big Oni is the big bad of it. So this is our equivalent to the, the cyber demon, or 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 even arch vials. You know the bit the the one that you don't want to deal with. Um. Okay, um, but that also gives us things like, again, the the we we have the the tr the three the three that that are the most known of the the Tanuki, the Kitsune, and the Oni. Um, Tanuki and Kitsune, I I I wasn't considering putting in as as monsters. Okay, so we'll um, keep those off to the side. Mm -hmm. Even though they're both very mischievous and in some cases want to kill humans, hello Tamamo no Mai. Yeah. Which yeah. reminds which reminds me, uh, when the Sesho Seki broke and everybody was concerned about the release of a Kitsune that's been entrapped for nearly a thousand years, the local government actually sent an entire Shinto procession out there <laughs> <laughs> to, pr to pray over the split stone. Remember, people, if the apocalypse was is marked as starting in 2022, you know why. Tamamo no Mae escaped her prison and is now sucking every man, woman, and child dry. But I think the first the first um, type of monster that we'd need to deal with is what what would be our equivalent to the foot soldiery type? Do we want something humanoid or not? Um, since we're, de I'm guessing, I'm, asking, I'm, I'm guessing I'm you have one for yes and one for no. So what, what were you thinking for each? So if we're going to do foot soldiers that are non-humanoid, I would recommend, uh, a Bake Neko, monster cats. Not necessarily a Neko Mata, because Neko Mata can be judicious but a bake neko those things are unless you're watching shachiku san wants to be healed by the little ghost um in most cases the uh the bake neko is is not something you really want to come up against uh as a normal person honestly whenever and, i think of bake neko i always i always think of um the medicine seller because mm. the Baku Neko in that story is not something to mess with. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it would be tempting I mean, to have them be these small, fast attackers, but I'd I'd say if actually I th actually I think that'd be the best approach with it to have Baku Nekos be our equivalent of um, lost souls, just not as annoying. Mm -hmm. You know, fast and meant to get in your face. Yeah. Um, let's see here. So, what were you thinking as far as the humanoid option on that front? Oh, uh, let me find the name again. This is why I never say that I run a professional podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, I think it's this one. Yes, um, the Amano Jaku. Um, in they're, I mean, they're like little gremlin type oni, is what they kind of look like. They're not the stereotypical giant oni with a club thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're used to, or, or in folklore, they, um. I guess the best way to put it 
is they they're the shoulder devil they tempt people into wickedness mm. so them being our our foot soldiers makes sense right. um could you write could you write it out in disputation him uh, of course I'll come right over there and write that out. Although, something funny about that word, it literally means heavenly evil spirit. Ama for for literally te, ten for heaven. Mm -hmm. No being of. And jaku meaning spirit, evil spirit. So evil spirit of heaven. Uh, I love, I love words. They're so good. And something like a foot soldier type in this kind of system is meant to be basically the boot camp for the for the. Not meant to be all that. You all still that. Still there, monk? I'm still here. Monk, I lost you completely. Oh, god. Okay, how about now? Okay, I can hear you now. Yeah, I think it I think it might actually be my my um my headset. Or at least the mic on it. But We'll deal, but I'll deal with that as as the issue as the issue comes later. Mm -hmm. In other words, we'll do it live. Indeed. But this would be the equivalent of these of these zombies or these shotgunners in in something like Doom or the foot soldiers in a medieval. Um, yeah. They show up in decent amount of numbers, but not but nothing too ma nothing too major. Um, I don't plan on doing an equivalent of chain gunner because it wouldn't fit, and I did my time. Indeed. Just look up the chain gunners in Plutonia, and you'll see and you'll see why people. Ah. <laughs> mm. uh. I would, and I'm not going to say that the Amano Jaku in this would be the equivalent of cultists in blood because, no. Because <laughs> even because even those guys can ru can run you down easy because blood wants to let wants to know that you are not going to have a easy time. Mm-hmm. Um. But. I'd say it. So we have that. We already have our. We already have our fast attackers with the Bake Neko. Mm -hmm. um, so for some for something that is for what would be what would be our equivalent to say the Kakos? Um, A Kako demon? Yeah. Flies and it's no annoying to deal with. Mm -hmm. A Tengu. <laughs> that should have been a little uh <clears throat> a little obvious there. <clears throat> yeah, that yeah, that should that should have been that should have been pretty uh, that should have been pretty obvious. Um So with that in mind, what about our equivalent to the pinky, the the thing that's the thing that tries to get in your face to distract you from other enemies, and is all and also hits you like a fucking truck if you don't get out of the way. Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. That is a good question. Um. Let me take a look at my continual uh, list of awesomeness. Um, <clears throat> uh, 
<clears throat> what about a Kamaitachi? The sickle weasels that cut things and ride dust devils? Mm -hmm. It's quick, it's tanky, it's, uh, it, it will hurt you if you're not careful. But it charges in straight lines, so like it isn't really maneuverable. So it's it's more akin to the to the pink demon in twenty sixteen and an eternal. Yes. Because uh, I'm I'm thinking we're we're designing a, a a dream boomer shooter. Some of the modern stuff needs to make it in. Mm -hmm. Pinky, pinky uh, when when I think pinky these days, I am associating it much more with twenty sixteen and eternal than I am with how pinky used to be yeah i can i can see i can um go with that um i mean the the only other the only other alternative i had in that case was a one yudo but i mean thinking that could be used for something different yeah um i i know some might might say what about our equivalent to the imp that'd still be the amano jock amano no jaku I don't. I don't see a reason to do that kind of thing twice. It's already the only. Di the only difference is one of them has projectiles and one of them is hit scan in in okay. something like Do in something like Doom. And in our case, they're go they're going to be doing melee or they're going to be doing um, projectile. Mm -hmm. And that's really it. Um. Although I I do have one for cursed souls. For lost souls. Yes, I call them cursed for a reason, and you know it. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, I thought we already had that with the Bake Neko. No, the Bake Neko, the, the Bake Neko doesn't just explode when it gets to you. But there's literally fireball spirits in Japanese folklore. Mm -hmm. It'd literally just be a lost soul, except Japanese flavored. <laughs> what, what's the name? Itodama, fireball, literally. <laughs> well, person fireball, I should say. It's a play on words. Yeah, I had just written as suicider. Um, although, if you're gonna go that route, then <laughs> I can't believe I'm gonna bring this up. But what's your equivalent for the pain elemental? Well, since the pain elemental is just a is just a caco demon with more health that shoots lost souls at you, we're gonna go with the bigger the tengu's bigger brother, the die tengu. And it'll collect the souls of dead humans and shoot them at you as Hitodama. How about that? I've made the pain elemental, but Japanese flavored. <laughs> oh. And also faster. I'm going to be honest, Tengu are not slow. No. <laughs> and this is going to be one of those enemies that, like, just like with the pain elemental, this is going to be one of those enemies that tries to outrange you, even though this is a close range game. So it's going to be the test of getting in close to take advantage of your of your close range weapons as a either that or saying screw it and throwing your mighty spear of Izanagi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> screw this! I'm throwing <laughs> um, the spear of heaven. What about what about our equivalent to Hell Knights? And in this case, I think we'd have to use the more modern Hell Knights because Hell Knights and Barons of Hell were kind of eh. I'm not, I'm not yeah. writing them off in the games that they were in, but the hell, but the Hell Knight has the Hell Knight kept getting kept um getting redesigns over the years until they settled on, um uh, until they settled on this guy. This guy is a close range charger that le that likes to pummel your ass. Yep. So for that, I was thinking a Gasha Dokuro. Which is a large skeleton made of smaller skeletons. <laughs> I'm sure you remember the Gasha Dokudo enemies from uh from Castlevania at some point. Yeah, fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're not that bad. They're big and slow. This mm -hmm. time our Gasha Dokudo are big and fast. Mm -hmm. We've made the Gasha Dokudo even more terrifying. <laughs> But like we could have a Gasha Dokudo for the Hell Knight, and then for its upgraded buddy, the Baron of Hell, it could be a Gasha Dokudo that's you know covered in like bits of flesh that it's kind of trying to use to make itself more sturdy and powerful. 
Mm -hmm. uh, would that just be a Dai Gashu Dokoro? Um, I don't think there'd be a name for it. We would actually be creating our own out of the initial Gashu Dokoro itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I did put it that they that they like to do short they like to do short reach ground pound. Yeah. I.e., you're gonna you're gonna have to do a bit of dancing with it, with them to deal with them in this co in this context. Yeah. Um. So, next one I'm thinking is as far as as far as what our equivalent would, I had I had considered what our equivalent would be for the um for the mancubus, but there's not a whole there there's not a whole lot to them that would fit that would fit our scheme. I mean, making a close range mancubus is uh, yeah, a bit difficult. I mean, yeah, 2016 but... and Eternal ha gave them flamethrowers, but. Mm -hmm. But what we could do is we could make a large tanky enemy that is not bipedal, because the Mancubus is not bipedal as much as people might think it is. It has a bunch of legs fused together into, into big legs, and I don't count that as a as bipedal. Um, I was thinking this is where we could use something like the Tsuchigumo. Large, tanky, shoots webs at you to slow you down. <laughs> Doesn't get around much, but tries to slow tries to slow you tries to slow you down with webbing. Um, I can go with that. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, we we have to bring up we have to bring up our equivalent to the meme lord, that being the revenant. Ah, uh, yes, the jet packing, rocket launching skeleton man. Would it even the, fit our Would it even fit our scheme? Because the whole thing is rockets with tracking. Yeah, no, no, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. I don't think we can actually put the revenant in this game. Mm -hmm. uh, we could put something. <sighs> although, some, although something that has the, that doesn't have the same jetpacks but has a whole lot of hopping, I think we could do. Yeah. Um. I. Okay. Um that does a bunch of hopping. That's that's a bit issue. There's a bit of an issue there. I don't mean hopping in lit in literal, but light but likes to reposition itself. Okay. When you whenever you it try and get close. In that case, we might use, I mean, a new A. I was, th actually, I was thinking, I was thinking of using new, using um, new A because that's a classic. Yeah. Head of a monkey, body of a raccoon dog, legs of a tiger, and a snake-headed tail. Um. Although inst instead of homing rockets, I'd say um, I'd say pro I'd say probably thunderbolts at you. Well, yes, because the new A is associated with electricity. So in that regard, it's let it's less of him, it's less of him making giant leaps and more of him doing electric dashes. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> Um, and when it, there's, that brings the, that brings the, 
I know I'd be tempted to to cover something like the Arachnatron or the or the um or Spider Mastermind, but those I don't really think fit our scheme. Plus, we already put in a spider. Mm-hmm. Um, but the but I think we can have some equivalent of the Arch Vial. I mean, we're facing a bunch of yokai, and. We haven't talked about why the yokai are attacking. We could actually pull some direct uh, um, inspiration from Ghostwire and say that the Archvile are fallen Onmyoji summoning yokai into the world and empowering them. So you know... Plus, it's a, it would be a good way to have our equivalent of that whole. You've got uh, of that whole thing of you can't you can't just take you can't just take it on head on. Yep. Since the whole thing with the yoke, the whole thing with the um, arch file was setting you on fire just by looking at you, and that fire is right in your damn face. Yep. And the Nun Miyoji could just stick a seal on you and catch you on fire, or send a shikigami after you, or set up his own fe protective field or any of those things that the arch file does. Yeah. You could easily argue that the resurrecting monsters thing is him making Shikigami. Mm-hmm. Um, especially since everybody loves the whole thing of it constantly resurrecting chain gunners. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and obviously, going obviously trying to trying to explain a story when you have three when you have three starting characters is a bit is a bit of a a bit a bit of a stretch. Um, but as far as far as the angle, we can I think we can go with the idea of yo of yokai in, of yokai invading and and the player character is some is somebody being get being given divine weaponry to try and stop it uh -huh. cuz that's cuz um when i look aside from the medicine pellets a lot of the a lot of the key based weapons and the inventory items are divine leaning uh -huh. um I remember that Otogi had it that had it that you that Raiko was was um su was summoned beca because because th because this was a way to make him clean after after all the stuff that he had done in his nor in his normal life. Mm -hmm. um, I don't obviously we can't go with that route because we're not we're not doing the whole if you run out of magic you die <laughs> kind of thing. I don't think that I don't think that would work with our system. Um, I do, however, think that it should be it should be some should be some renegade should be some renegade member of an imperial court, um, deci deciding to wreak havoc. That's. As far as as far as the names, we don't have to use any any mythological or historical names on that kind of thing. But what um what period would you use as the backdrop? Um, I would actually not use the frankly overused Sengoku Jidai. I wasn't even thinking Sengoku. I was thinking like maybe Heian. Heian could work. I was thinking more since we've already mentioned Benkei a few times, mm -hmm. um, the actual battles between the Genji and the Heikei. I'm trying to remember what period that's supposed that's supposed to be leaning into. I th I'm pretty sure that's um, during the Genpei War. Let's see. So that was eleven eighty to eleven eighty five, um, and that's late Heian. Yep. 
but I'm specifically thinking this this happens during the Genpei War. Mm-hmm. And well, we've there have been there have been plenty of there have been plenty. Aside from the fact that that's around the same time as the get that the two Genji games that we got, and yes, I still have both of them. Judge as judge as you will. Um, a common motif that we that we've seen is a is the country is at war. This is creating this is creating a whole lot of strife and suffering, and the line and the line between the physical and and supernatural planes are thin. Which is actually pretty par for the course for Japanese legend in general. Um, there's, I mean, there's an entire section of yokai for wartime, and in fact, there's a a, uh, a what was it called? It's a it's a specific yokai. Let me look at my little list of yokai again. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, there's the juboko which is a, a, a yokai tree that sucks the blood out of things that grows on battlefields it grows off the blood of the dead um, there's the kosen jobi which are um, essentially they're will-o'-wisps that float over former b- battlefields mm-hmm. like War is war is a big supernatural thing in Japanese uh, folklore. So since since this can take place during the Genpei War, um, I mean, you as can tempting even take... as it would as tempting as it would be to reference the war itself, the approach the approach that I'd rather take is this was this was this whole thing happened at one battlefield that. Um, where both where both both sides get both sides got wiped out because what because deep because yokai started showing up, which is fine. We can go with that. Um, uh, include including including the PC. I'd say I'd say afterwards they afterwards they were re- they were um resurrected. I knew we were going with the "you're already dead" meme. <laughs> I figured you can eat. You can either you can either you can either st- you can either stay dead you can either stay dead or get a chance or get a second chance at life by by ke- by clearing out the by clearing out this invasion of yokai. This also makes you yourself a yokai, which is why you're so effective. <laughs> The supernatural fighting the supernatural. Mm-hmm. Of course, that would mean that you'd have been approached by Izanagi. You'd have had to have been. You would have had to have been like, okay, so here's the thing. My wife's trying to break out of hell again. This entire yokai thing is kind of her fault. If you go and help me keep the... the if you help me cleanse the lands so that she can't break out of Yomi, I would appreciate that. Thanks. I'd, I'd say that I'd, although obviously he's obviously the player character wouldn't be approached by Izanagi in this kind of thing, but rather, would rather a attendant. Not even an attendant. It'd be it'd be a it'd be a um a disguise. Mm-hmm. Old man, old man Izanagi, or maybe he sends his son uh, Tsukiyomi down to you. Yeah. But I'd say I'd say beca- as tempting as given given the style that we're going with, um, mm-hmm. I think ha- I think having some sort of momentum mechanic would be apropos. Whether it whether it is st- whether it is um, st- whether it is some sort of st- some sort of style thing that can result in a power up or some or something close. Just something to reward you playing the playing the um proper loop. Mm-hmm. 
I'm not sure how would we go about that. Um, it could it could just be something as something as simple as a style gauge. Divine favor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the God. <laughs> The land rejoices your 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 uh your attempts to clean things you have you have uh or to, your attempts to cleanse away this this uh stain mm -hmm. you 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 have gained divine favor with the local kami mm -hmm. uh, plus i'd i'd say i'd say something like divine favor would be a good way to do some sort of sliding difficulty. Oh, so now we're going to make it like God Hand. Got it. <laughs> oh. but when was... you say sliding difficulty, that's the first thing that comes to hand with a game that has some sort of momentum mechanic that also is sliding difficulty. Fair. <laughs> game get harder, better you do. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going. I'm not going that that kind of approach. What I was what I was thinking of is a is a style meter that when it's when it's maxed out is equivalent to our is our equivalent to tome of power. Okay. And you can only maintain maximum style for so long before it before you have to build back up from zero. Yeah, um, I kind of liken it to how S to how S rank on the style gauge worked in Rainblood Chronicles. Mm -hmm. But I'd say, re I'd say, I again the I, the idea is that you is that. It doesn't matter what doesn't matter what side of the Genpei War um, the player character was a part of. He was just a part of this battle that just went horribly wrong. Yep. And so now he is coming back from the dead to cleanse the land of this stench of yokai. Mm -hmm. I mean, hell, we could even reference that this isn't a this isn't like a normal uh, hyaki yako. This isn't like a normal parade of the yokai. There's something more to it. Yeah, and that's why we see the the human onmyoji among it event eventually. And I would say, as ten, I realize it is very tempting to ha to have Iz to have Izanami as the final boss. I wouldn't go with that approach. No, I wasn't thinking Izanami. Um, it, she's only influencing things. She's she can't get out of Yomi, mm -hmm. not with the boulder that Izanagi put in front of it. The entire reason she's influencing things is to try and get the yokai to pull that boulder out, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I actually think the final boss should be whoever the mastermind is behind the onmyoji and the yokai. And some, th some, some sort of person who may even have his own divine favor. You're thinking of making our version of Virgil, aren't you? No, I am actually thinking of making our version of Anti-Sparta. Fair. Essen essentially, essentially, this is a human who may have had divine favor, um, thought that the gods were too uninvolved during the Genpei War, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh He's likely not even a daimyo. He is likely more, more more than likely to be a vassal of some sort, and likely a vassal of one of the Heisei or one of the Heike or or uh, Genji branch clans. Um, and as such, you know, he's just like fuck this. Humans suck. The gods suck. Let the world fall to death. You know, opening up the underworld is not a good idea, especially when the wife of your of your Genesis God wants to get out and make the world dead. <laughs> and so he 
he'd be some sort of vassal who's likely pretty skilled in whatever he does. And I think he shouldn't be like any of the classes we start with. Or she. I don't know. It could be his wife. Who knows? The person. The mastermind. The... You should know I'm rambling and spitballing here. Mike. Yeah. Um, I remember that there was the story of Taira no At- Atsumori, who was, ki- who was killed at a young age and became famous in death. Mm-hmm. Now, I would... I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised. The more that I think about it, my my mind my mind leans to using a version of him that um that that en- that ended up getting that ended up getting influenced influ- influenced by the by the yokai in his final moments. I mean, he technically dies after the Genpei War. I say technically. Well, during the very last parts of the of the Genpei War, I guess is the better way to put it. Um, what about Tokiko? Tokiko? Ah, that might work. Uh, I don't know. I don't think Tokiko's as well known. Of course, we're do- we're doing a whole lot of deep cuts as it is. I know. I I think though that t- going with Taita would be the better reference. Uh, even if Taita only died in like the last years of the war. And to be fa- to be fair, when playing around with historical fiction, it's not it's not like we're the only ones who, um, who don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. Mm-hmm. Uh I mean, after all, we both we we both have we both have played through the original Neo, and while William did ex- did exist, they gave him the wrong accent. He was Dutch, not a uh, not English. Mm-hmm. Which is one of those little things that only only that only the purists would ra- would raise a stink about. And yeah. you and I are f- are as far from purist as one can get, but I get the feeling you went with the what you went with that approach because because the final boss should be a proper test, and when we when you stop and think about it, final bosses in boomer shooters aren't the best, mm-hmm. or just bo- just bosses in general. Mm-hmm. They they tend to just be HP sponges with. Attacks that you can actually avoid pretty easily in most cases. So if we're going to do an HP sponge, it's best to only do it once. Yeah, and I don't think it should be our final boss. And I'd, I'd say I'd say when it comes to our HP sponge, we kind of have that covered with the Oni. Yep. Oh. Well, with with the with the Oni general or whatever we're we'll calling him, because Oni is also a generic term for multiple times of of 
I'd say Oni, I'd say since they're meant to be super heavies, Oni General would be the would be the best approach. Yeah. Um. And I'd say I'd say that I'd say that about covers everything that everything that we can, that we can think of. Um, I know so, I <laughs> I ha with with a boss fight le with um, Atsumori I would we would certainly not try and fall into the same the same trap that the quote unquote boss uh, that is supposed to be the icon of sin is because that is not a boss fight that's a puzzle. It, um, he's been a puzzle in all of his appearances, hasn't he? The icon Especially of sin in Eternal, I'd say, is not as much of a puzzle. I mean, the puzzle... The, I, I consider him an endurance run rather than anything challenging. You just have to make sure you kill all his sections and avoid his attacks, and that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah, but the, the icon of sin in Doom 2 was very much a puzzle than more than it was a boss. Yep. Oh. You have to shoot the head of John Romero. Mm hmm And I'd if I'd say if I'd say if there's any I'd say if there's any game in the in in those early boomer shooters that that did a better job when it came to bosses. Oddly enough, it pro even though I cheesed the hell out of them, it it'd probably be um blood. Yes. Blood did some fantastic boss battles. Even though they were fairly easy to cheese. Fairly easy to cheese, and your reward is looking through those cutscenes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I love Blood to Death, but I'm not going to defend that. <laughs> but that should that should cover all that should cover everything we can think of for this particular experiment. This was this was a interesting approach. Um, I'm while well, certain well, we'll certainly be doing backseat game design once again. This is not something I plan on making a habit of in this form, unless uh, unless the muse strikes me properly, which not so much this case. Mm. But this will not be the first time. This will not be the last time that we um that we do that we. That we do this, that we do this kind of thing, because there's, there's a, there's a couple other, there's a couple other entries when it comes to game design that we'll be ripping into in the coming weeks. In fact, this month is going to be game design heavy, but it's only because we've been game design light in the last few months. I. And so, of course, um. All, as always, my sincere thanks for everyone who took the time out of their schedule to listen, and even more so for putting up with the bizarre bullshit of 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 our um of our technology setup wanting to fuck with me. It wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a geek watch without it. Mm -hmm. But we will be we will be back in 24 hours with a little something different. So un until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and join the watch. <laughs>